Foreign Filmcast, episode 10. talking about the Israeli film Fill the Void. This was directed and written by Rama Burstein. Yeah. Please excuse my pronunciation. I, I'm clueless here. The star of the movie is Hadas Yaron, starring as Shira Mendelman. This is a 2012 Israeli drama gives us an sort of an insider look at the world of the uh, Orthodox Jewish community Ultra. in uh, the Tel Aviv area. I heard this was the entry for the Israeli Best Foreign Film Oscar. We saw this with a Q&A, and at the Q&A, this community was referenced to as Hasidic, Orthodox, and now that I look at the wiki, it's called Haredi. So I have no idea. Anybody want to correct me, feel free. But this is what we got. Paul. What would you think of the movie? Without spoiling it, of course. We're doing better than the trailer. If you don't want to be spoiled, don't watch the trailer. No spoilers. I I, I thought it was an interesting movie. It's an insider view of the Hasidic community, like Jonathan said. The camera takes were interesting because it was all close up. Everything's condensed to small rooms and very personal and give you the feel that you're inside the community. The dialogue or the writing, it's really, I don't know, you should say terse or, and then it's not descriptive. Like they try to, always like kind of beating around the bush so i believe they're trying to do that on purpose because i'm not maybe it's the community they don't want to speak out their feelings uh, yeah i don't i don't know i don't know how it is but it felt real to me i was fooled but i'm, I'm an easy fool because uh, i don't know much about this community yeah, Aww. yeah, I, I agree. And that's, I feel the same way too. So the way it was written, it was kind of like almost like a poem. You know, they don't, you know, trying to be like metaphorical a little bit or not trying to mean what you're mean, but you know, you look at their, you have to look at their eyes and what they're doing. So it's very visual and the silences are very important. I, pre- I presume the it's accurate. There was a Q&A after and the, the people that seem to know about this stuff seem to rave about it. So right. another thing they mentioned was that, that they have several... Uh, film schools in Israel. Israel is a, is a country of, I think we looked it up, it was under... 7. Point million, 7.5 million? Something around and there. And they're like 14 So not, not a ton. California has... I one? think 30 or more. So it's, it's not a huge country, yet they have 14 film schools. They have a huge and film industry. They said one of those was an Orthodox mm-hmm. uh, Jewish school. The others were... Secular. Secular, secular. Yeah, they were secular, and secular that, schools. Another thing was that all the actors were secular. The director is now an Orthodox Jew by choice, so we presume she has an insider uh, perspective. We were also told that this was a hit in Israel, both with the secular and Orthodox community. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. correct. Trace, mm-hmm. your reaction. I think what Paul was trying to say earlier was that it's a very subliminal movie. There's a lot of um, nuances that are said, a lot of things that are not said. I loved the movie. I loved the way it was shot. It was, to me, like a Rembrandt painting. Um, Just the tone of the film, and it's very intimate. It gives you an insider view of the tight-knit Jewish community. Not many outsiders are allowed within this community. I, I like it's beautiful. it too, it's beautiful. but I definitely wouldn't recommend it to everyone. If you're interested in discovering this culture, if that's the kind of thing that interests you, then yeah, it's pretty fascinating. I'm now uh, a product of modern editing. <laughs> I would have preferred a movie maybe 25 minutes shorter. <laughs> you could argue that the slowness adds to the reality and adds to the feel. The build-up. As, as Paul said, the cinematography is very specific. Mm-hmm. It's, it's mostly close-ups and mostly interiors, as was discussed at the Q&A. This gives you simultaneously a feeling of intimacy and claustrophobia. Yeah. In addition, there's, there's not a lot of color. It's mostly black. And white. It's just very cozy. It has a very cozy, intimate feel. It draws you in. Yeah, well, I, I, I appreciate some of the religious rituals. I, I really love that. Uh, I thought that, you know, I didn't feel like, you know, from a Christian perspective, I didn't know how they celebrated things. Would you recommend this to a general audience? I, I Again, yeah, I think you're right. I think it's more of, it seems like more of a documentary and, and it's a, a sympathetic view of these people, you know, an insider view. So, yes, I think people who are interested in learning about them, one, two, three, spoiler. The basic premise of the movie is this is a, a family with, uh, th- I think, three daughters. 
Mm-hmm. One daughter has a child and is, is married. Uh, this woman dies during childbirth. Esther. Her name's Esther. And soon after, the, the woman's husband is looking to, to be remarried. And this is a culture in which marriages are Encouraged. what I will call semi-arranged, meaning they're not completely arbitrarily arranged. It's not where you have two sets of families saying, you, you, go, you're in, no choice. It's more like arranged It's like a dates. matchmaker, like a matchmaker kind of thing. They, they have little meetings where they mm-hmm. kind of screen each other. It's kind of arranged, arranged dates, although the dates are... A, l- a little different, as might be imagined. <laughs> so in this case, the husband uh, has a potential match in Belgium. It's a, a woman that he knew as a child, and he's looking at, at the possibility of, of meeting with her to see if, if he could possibly marry her. It seems a little extreme to me after so, after the Q&A brought up the issue that, mm-hmm. uh, wow, I mean... He's got to go all the way to Belgium to, to find a to right. find a girl. I mean, that's unrealistic. But uh, never that's that's the story. It the the mother the mother of the woman who died is in agony. She feels like all she's got left of her is the grandson. Is the is her child? And that that's what I interpret. And when she learns of this plan, she's she goes a little nuts, and she develops a plan for this man to marry. One of her other daughters. She he discusses she discusses this with her husband, and then they present it to the daughter, and she has very mixed feelings, but ultimately decides to go for it. When she meets with the rabbi in a group setting, she says, "Yes, I want to do this," and she makes it clear that she feels like this is the the best thing to do, but reveals that this is not an emotional choice. And the rabbi says something like, uh, feelings are are all that matter here. And so they call everything off, and it's a big, it's a big hit to, to the family. And the acting in this, in my opinion, and I think you'll, you guys will agree, is pretty phenomenal. The actress, don't know how to say her name, Haras Yaron, she got a Venice Award for her acting at the Venice, Venice uh, Film Festival. An award at the Venice Film Festival. Yep. Did you, how did you guys feel about the acting? She was amazing. So it was very good. Um, yeah, it felt very, it felt as cl- as close as a and yo hey too drama can get to documentary to me. Wasn't yeah. he like a George Clooney the dude yo hey George Clooney to you some sort of stud? He he kind of he was a little bit different from me. He, he acted like a tough guy for <laughs> an Orthodox Jew. He's a, like, he's apparently a sex symbol in in Israel. Very mysterious. But, uh, came across to me very authentic, although he did have a certain charisma and confidence magnetism and also i I, one one scene i kind of didn't like from hadas yaron which i think the her crying scene when she started to cry because she disappointed her mother you know which time she cried so much so much no there's that one scene where she like they said no to her her request to marry yoke and her mother was devastated, and she started to cry, like, you know, the daughter, Shira. But she, hey. it was not that real to me. It was, like, kind of forced. All right, anything else to add? Again, I think oh. we recommend this to anybody who's kind of an indie, indie film geek, foreign film geek. General public uh, won't be interested unless they enjoy this kind of experience of discovering a, a subculture. It's a very deep movie. It's got a, it's multi-thematic. It's got so many underlying themes. You have to really go into it with uh, open mind and, um, yeah, you have to keep in mind know, of the, the culture, conservative, conservative nature of the culture where, you know, and the music, there's a lot of ritual that, that you, a lot of people may, it may be hard for people to take. All right. Thumbs up to the right people. Thumbs Reach, up for thumbs me. Thumbs up to the right people. I think, Thumbs up. I, I agree. I think the five movies that made it to the, were, that were nominated, I believe most of them, it was good. I, maybe except for War Witch. Uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I prefer this movie to War Witch. I prefer this movie to know. But uh, Contiki, I believe, and A Royal Affair, and I'm sure, and I think, you know, Amor, I think th- those were probably better than. Contiki and A Royal Affair were both uh, had a broader appeal. Mm-hmm. Amor, not, a, not as broad, but pretty intense uh, movie i can see why that got some respect yeah 
Again, reach us, formfilmcast at gmail.com. Okay, and big news on my part. I have an email address. I've had it for a while. I just didn't remember. So masterpaulff at gmail.com if you have a comment. I'm ready to... I'm ready to take your comments now. Nice. Master FF. All right, everybody. Um, I'm Trace 700 at AOL. <laughs>